even though the two do become one, you still have to maintain some individuality, mm. if that makes sense. It because, does. I mean, if, if we're both the same at all the time and we don't need one of us, you know what I'm saying? That That's that's how I feel about that. No, that's real time. Five, four, three, two, one. Whether you've been married one or 20 plus years, at some point, you realize you were married into crazy. And that's what our podcast is all about. We offer love, laughter, and a dose of reality as we unpack this crazy thing called marriage. So sit back, relax, and get your ear hustle on. It's time to start the conversation. All right, let's go. Yo, what's up? It's your boy, E.T. Look, if you're looking to or you got to raise the bar on your marriage, you got to you gotta click the link and get into Married in the Crazy, y'all. I'm telling you, this coaching is going to take your relationship to another level. Now, look, you already know you need to raise the bar. You know that already. So stop thinking or overthinking. Click that link and Marriage in the Crazy is going to take you and your spouse to marital bliss. Now you know. Click the button. Let's go. Well, welcome to another episode of the Married in the Crazy podcast with Snooks and Lovey. I'm Lovey. I'm Snooks. And we want to thank each and every one of you for coming back once again. And you know what? Special kudos to those of you that did come back after listening to me kind of go on one last week because I ran solo. And if I didn't scare you away, um, and, and for those of you that asked, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with Snooks. She's here. Say hi. I just said I'm Snooks. I know. I just want to make sure they know it's not a just <laughs> me holding up a recorder like, oh, I got her voice. No, she's here in full effect. And she was a little gun shy based on, you know, I wanted her to do a solo again. And she was like, nah, I want to do it with you, which is so nice. You're my better half. See, as we're preparing for thanks, not Thanksgiving, as we're preparing for uh, what Valentine's, is it? Day. Valentine's Day, which is the same thing to me because I'm giving thanks for you. Mm-hmm. You're going to make me some food and all that? No, I'm just giving thanks for you. Oh, you know what? That is a correlation. It does tie in. Valentine's Day, you go out to dinner and all that. Now on Thanksgiving, it's about food and stuff. Every holiday is about food. Okay. Every single holiday. Fair, is, fair point. Fair seems point. Seems to be about food of some sort. <laughs> no, but, you know, we, we just wanted to uh, jump on here. So this is going to be a short one as well. And rather than me do all the talking or... Having Snooks go solo all by herself because she missed me, my boo. Um, I'm going to interview Snooks. But before I go there, I want to remind everybody, if you could, go out and reach out to a friend, talk to a family relative, um, dial a stranger <laughs> if you have to. But let them know that they should go on to wherever they get their their podcast, specifically Spotify or Apple Podcasts um, and wherever. But go ahead and subscribe, leave a rating and a comment. We truly appreciate that to improve discoverability. We don't ask for money. We don't do any of that. This is not a paid podcast, but our currency is sharing because sharing is caring, right? And and we would love for you to actually share. If you get anything from our conversations, whether it's the interviews, the the content experts that we bring on for a variety of different subject matters, um, or just us when we're telling stories and sharing the things that we've gone through, if you've gotten anything out of that at any point, we're asking that you share it with someone and invite them to subscribe and leave a comment and a rating on either Spotify or Apple podcasts. That's right. Or also I don't say, or, but also um, when you do go online um, to our, our website, check out our RTB uh, raise the bar. Oh yeah. So we didn't talk about it enough, but what we've decided going forward, and we're going to talk about this more throughout the year uh, and especially for Valentine's day, you heard ET talking at the very beginning, you know, hit that button. He's talking about our Raise the Bar program. Raise the Bar is an 18-part video series, very short videos with a workbook that goes along with it. And you pay whatever you want for it. There are no obstacles between you and raising the bar on your relationship. There was a price tag for it, and people were purchasing it. But we've, I don't know, it was on our spirit, it was on our heart, more so hers than mine, (laughs) that she really wanted, Snooks really wanted to make this available for everyone. So that way there was nothing stopping you from taking your relationship to the next level. Mm -hmm. So go to raisethebarmarriage.com 
Look at the video testimonials are there from real couples from a variety of different backgrounds that have actually taken the program and hear what they have to say. Based on what they're saying, think about what it means to you, right? And just go ahead and pay whatever you like so that way you can actually have it. You know, if you want to pay $5,000, $5,000. You want to pay $50? We $50. know that's You want to pay twenty five? dollars It's just it's completely up to you. So that way we, you know that we're in this for your relationship, right? That's right. So what I would love to do as we're heading into Valentine's Day 2023 is really ask you a few questions. Like, And it's on the same tip as what I talked about last week. If you didn't see it, a very short podcast was about you know, what it means to be a better husband. I gave three tips to being a better husband. And it wasn't just my mindset. It was things that I pulled from previous interviews, right? Conversations that we've had with subject matter experts in the past, but mostly from the husbands. And I tried to look at what were some of the common denominators that kept coming up over and over and over again. And I shared them last week. So what I'm going to ask you is to do the same thing, to pick three things or provide three tips to being a better wife. Well, um, first off, you're, oh, you're already amazing. There's nothing you could do to make you a better wife. Okay. You better have said that anyway. Snap, snap. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that on air, but I'm gonna give you a list <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> no, just playing. But no, honestly, let, let's, let's start there. So, um, random order, we're going to pick three things. So, well, I, communication is one thing, um, that's very important. And we talk about, well, we have to be able to compromise. And another one is uh, just being able to be your own self, you know, being in, having, being independent, not independent. Let me, let me expound on that. So. Okay. Hold on. Let, let's okay. go one by one. Let's not like lump them all together. Let's pick one. And then you kind of go, you dive deep on that. And then we'll move on to the next. Okay. Which one do you want to go to first? Um, We could talk about what I mean by being independent. Independent woman, I N D E P E N D. Okay, so let's hear what you're talking about. So what what I mean is that you know, a lot of times I feel like people, some people, they get into relationships and and they lose themselves. You know, it's like now all of a sudden, I mean, you had your own mind prior to the relationship, prior to the marriage, and after you say I do, or once you you get into this relationship. You, you lose who you are. Your thoughts become his thoughts or his thoughts become your thoughts or, or whatever. You you don't, it's, it's almost like you can't have, be your own person. Um, you don't have your own hobbies anymore. Some people, you know, oh, you used to like to roller skate. I'll just use, throw that one out there. But, but now you don't because now you're always with Jed or whatever, doing whatever Jed wants to do. I was like, who's Jed? Okay. <laughs> I rolled up your tongue a little too quick, but okay. But when you lose that independence in the relationship, your own independence in the relationship, it's like you lose your voice in a sense, you know? So even though the two do become one, you still have to maintain some individuality, mm. if that makes sense. It because does. I mean, if if we're both the same at all the time, and we don't need one of us, you know what I'm saying? That that's that's how I feel about that. No, that's real talk. Um, that's real talk. But- and also, I'm sorry. There there have been times in relationships where you have that one that will like overshadows the other person. Is like, oh, it's all about them. It's their show. It's their show. And you're hanging back in the rafters or if, if that's okay with you. And if that's the type of person that you are, then okay, go for it. You know, but if that's not okay with you, this, he's out in front and he's always seen and he's always, you know, it's always about him. It's always about him. Then you can grow to start resenting him mm-hmm. or, or vice versa. Or it doesn't always have to be him out in the front. But it could be her out in the front. You'll start to, you could start to gain some type of resentment for, I don't want to say posturing, but for him being out, you know, always in the limelight or whatever. It shouldn't be a competition, but you still should have your own, be able to have your own interests and um, your own individuality, you know. I like that. I, you know, it's funny, as you were saying that, it reminded me of, remember we had a conversation about Ricky Williams 
and his wife. And it's oh yeah. And and to that point, I cannot remember Ricky Williams what he changed his name to. Ricky Williams. There was a, there was a past podcast, and oh, I should have yeah. thought of this beforehand. Yeah. But because this is kind of like off the cuff, I'm I'm interviewing her on the spot. But Ricky Williams, the the the, it, the episode, I'll have it in the show notes when I figure it out. Um, but to that point, his wife, even though she is a lawyer, um, she's well established. Whenever they were together, it was like her identity got lost because they wanted to always talk about Ricky Williams, the football mm-hmm. player, as opposed to her. So that's why he ended up changing, changing his, his name. name. His last name to her name. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yep. He changed his name to her last name in order to make sure that she wasn't getting lost in the fray. Mm-hmm. And that way she, her independence is there. And he was so confident in his own authenticity and his, right. his personality yeah, that he's like, I don't need you to recognize me for my last name. I am who I am. Mm-hmm. And the other part of that, just the confidence that you, that you get, um, it gives you a, a sense of self, number one, but also if I have something, I'm coming to you, I'm talking about some of my interests or whatever, it keeps the relationship, it keeps the conversation going. You know what I'm saying? In right. in a sense. So it's not um, everything just shuts down and, okay, whatever you say, <laughs> I'm not barking. <laughs> whatever you like. <laughs> whatever, exactly. But you have to be able to be independent, you know, still maintain who you are. I love that. No, and that's good. I mean, even like right now with you going through your master's program, and the, the the evolution, you know, you got you got your dual major when you were getting your associates, and then you got your bachelor's degree, and then now you're in your master's for social work program, and and it's funny. So I we have these really robust conversations because your world is very different from mine. Now we're starting to see some overlap. I brought it up oh, earlier today how mm-hmm. even within healthcare, there's things that social workers do, but it's cool. I love talking to you to learn more about it because it's this completely different world that I don't know about that independence. And individuality is there. So that's good. Okay. So maintain your independence is, num- I'm not going to, is this in any sequential order? Is that number one or is that, does it matter? I don't think so. Okay. So independence, what is the second tip for being a better wife? Um. Well, compromising. That's, that's. Hey, can I just say amen? That let, goes let both ways, bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted. No, that's okay. Um, being able to compromise, you know, it's not just about, it's not just the, the lovey show, you know, right. or the Ernie show or the Ernest show. <laughs> <laughs> all my different uncle E, all, all these different all personalities. Right, right, right. Right. I mean, you know, you have to be able to, it, there, we always say the ebb and flow, there's a yin and a yang, you know, um, we move through this relationship together and we have to be able to make agreements, have some mutual grounds. And and in in compromising too, it makes me think about you grow respect for each other. Hmm. You know, it's not just your way or the highway. I know that some people may have that thought process. No, you're going to do what I say and you're going to do it the way I want it done and blah, blah, blah. But no, what if I don't like that? You know, it shouldn't ever be. It's just the one person. It's being able to, all right, I concede. You know, I'll let you have that one. Not keeping score, though. Not keeping score, but just being able to say, all right, you're right. You know, you you have this one or whatever. However it is that you guys do, you're compromising. You know, I can't say, well, you should compromise on this or you should compromise. There are big things and there are small things that people compromise about. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Okay, so putting you on the spot, you said No, I do not. No, I'm playing. (laughs) No, you said compromise. Mm-hmm. What is the difference between, or is there a difference between compromising and yielding? I knew because that was going to come up. I knew that was going to come up. When we talk about crazy, you know, mm-hmm. crazy stands for compassionate, being more compassionate, real, accountable, zealous, and yielding. Mm-hmm. That's what we say when we're talking about being married into crazy. Mm-hmm. Yielding to me is always kind of akin to compromising. And I wonder, do you have a distinction between the two? Um, There probably is a, some type of distinction, but for me, I don't necessarily look at it like that. Um, well, okay, no, let me let me let me take that back. Let me take that back. No, 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 I don't take it back. No, I, I think they're 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 one in the same, basically, okay. because when I'm compromising, that means I'm giving up or I'm conceding on a certain thing that I want. There has to be a point of reference for there to be, you know, there's a differencing point of reference. So I feel one way, you feel one way. So now we're compromising 
and we're doing either what you say or what we're doing what I say, or maybe we're just do something totally different, you know, in a sense is still yielding, even if we do something totally different, because I didn't do the thing that I wanted to do. But does that make sense? It does. But so here, so that fuels another question. So is compromise all, is it all or nothing? Meaning like it's a hundred percent your way. It's a hundred percent my way. What no. can it be like? That's why it's called 60, 40. Can it be like, you know what? 60% of my idea or 60% of your idea, 40% of mine, or maybe 70 yours, 30 mine. Yeah, it's or, compromise is fluid. You know, it's not, it's so you don't, you can't be rigid in your compromising. I don't think, Okay. you know, you have to be able to be flexible. There's some wiggle room. And like I said, it's never, um, one specific way that you compromise. So, okay. I'm, I'm just I, asking. I compromised to did this. No, I'm playing. I heard that. <laughs> what I heard, you know, just to kind of recap is that when it comes to compromise, it's, it's similar. It's, it's synonymous with yielding. I, right? I believe that. And that it should be 70, 30, where you should be compromised. Like it should always be 70% levy, 30% snooks when it comes to a compromise. Hmm. That's, that's, that's what I heard. That's what you heard. That's okay. what I heard. Well, you know, and I'm we, sticking we to did it. say that you, we got to check your ears. True. So. <laughs> yeah. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Okay. That's, that's good. Okay. So the two, so, so far two things, uh, one was maintaining your independence. Hmm. Second one was being able to compromise, being able to compromise. All right. And so what's your third one? Uh, communication. That's probably should have been number one, but I feel like communication is the key to so many things, you know, um, how we communicate, what we communicate about um, that. That's so important because everything for me boils down to communication hmm. and there's good communication. There's bad communication. Um, how do you talk to each other? You know, that's you a can, good point because we talk about communication is the key to all things. But like you said, there can be good communication. Mm -hmm. There's such thing as bad communication. So don't just it's not just a blanket statement of communication. So yeah, I, I assume you're talking about you know good, productive communication. Yeah, you have to be it. Ha it has to be um, good, productive communication because mis um, misunderstandings come from I feel like this is just me. Misunderstandings come from lack of communication. You know, it could be bad communication or you, you're not listening or whatever it is. You know, when anything that comes up, we have to be able to talk about it. Okay. You can't hold grudges. You can't, I'm just going to keep it all in. And then I'm blowing up and, you know, I, what are you talking about? You can't do that kind of stuff, but, you know? Well, you know, if I'm throwing a vase across the room and calling out your name, that's still communicating. Yeah, I said good and bad. Okay, let's make sure we wow we okay. underline that we <laughs> underline that so people get it. So no, I mean, you said I'm supposed to communicate. Oh, no, throwing I mean, knives. You know, you when you communicate, you are it's it's sharing of ideas, right? Communication is sharing of ideas. There's uh, verbal communication. There's nonverbal communication. When I nonverbally, you know what I'm thinking when I'm I give you a look or I give you a touch or whatever. I'm communicating. So you have to be able to know how to resolve conflicts, know how to uh, be nice and, and, and <laughs> say, I'm sorry. I mean, why, you know, you touched me when you said you, you touched my shoulder. Like you have to learn how to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean it like that. I don't know. That was like, you didn't touch me no other time, but that cue was there. <laughs> touch you all the time i think that was subliminal ever no i'm just saying you know communication is um one thing about communication is everyone communicates differently so it's very important to learn how your partner communicates how they like to receive information how they how they give information because there are more a lot of arguments stem from not understanding how to how your partner communicates I like that. you know because you'll say something and i'm like what or i'll say something or i'll look at you you're like what and then we could just it could be all bad but we've learned how to talk to one another like i said verbally and non-verbally so we have to be able to be open you have to be honest you have to be able to say, hey, this is what's bothering me, blah, 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 whatever. On the flip side, it has to be a safe space, too. 
your partner has to allow, I won't say allow, but make it a safe space to be able to talk about whatever it is that's going on. Because not being able to say what's on your mind or not for fear of retaliation or it's going to be a big old argument, we finna be, I'm not even about to do all that, you know. That's not, that's, that's miscommunication. That's bad communication by not having any at all, you I know? Like that. So one thing too, I, I want to say a lot of times when we're communicating and we say, I'm just telling you, I was just telling you, I'm only saying it because I was just telling you. I'm just you keeping know, it real. Let's, let's make sure that when we are communicating and you're only telling me, or I'm just saying that it's not the nagging though, you know, cause that, that is let me just put this out there too. Women are not the only people who nag. Men are nags also, you know. Wow. Not taking shots. <laughs> I don't know. I felt I'm, like a shot. No, I'm just Look, I'm just gonna put it out there too. Like, <laughs> like wait, wait, hold I say, up. I say that because there there are some people who's like, Oh my gosh, if he tell me that one more time, oh my gosh, if she say blah blah blah, you know, nagging comes in different forms. So if I tell you something. And you hear what I say or or you act like you don't hear me or whatever. I know you heard me. I don't need to keep telling you, you know, or it, the same thing. You tell me something that's like I feel like as parent, a lot of us in relationships, I know everyone's not, but a lot of us in relationships, we are a lot of us are parents. So we take that because uh, we tell our kids over and over and over. I told you to do this. I told you to do that. I told you blah, blah, blah. Da, 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 da. And so we take that same mode and we do that with our spouses, our partners, or even, you know, maybe if you don't have children, maybe you own a business. And so you're always telling your employees, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> I'm like, I'm getting lectured now. No, you're not. No, no I know. I know. This is good. I need to hear this as well because I know I'm guilty. But I'm saying if you're, if you're used to telling, you know, people what to do, Make sure that you don't come home and huh, it and insult your partner in in a sense, mm -hmm. you know, because the repetitive. I already said it. I already. I told you. 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 Now it could build up resentment because you're like, I ain't finna do that at all because I already know. I'm just gonna let it sit there. Or but what if something needs to get done and it just doesn't get done? Because so if something needs to get done that doesn't get done, you could do it. It's okay. Okay. Because we're not keeping score, right? Not keeping score. Okay. Mm, I didn't like how you said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, not keeping score. I'm like, okay. Like that. If it gets done by the spouse, just don't go behind the spouse saying, I didn't like the way it was done. I'm just I, saying. I, I do that. I'm I'll, saying. But. That's why I don't clean the bathrooms. That is not why you don't clean the bathroom. No, that probably is why. I ain't going to get on here and be act like I don't do that. No, but this is good stuff. I'm really glad you're sharing this. This is good. This is no, no, you honestly, made me feel bad. no, no, I'm just playing with you, but no, this is really good. So, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. This was the top three tips that came from a variety of different interviews. Um, when it came to what are the top three things you can do to be a better wife? Last week, I, I talked about just went solo, top three things to be a better husband. So, we hope you enjoy these. And, and, and let me just say this also it's not, don't, don't take it and be like, oh. Y'all don't know what y'all talking about. This is from my perspective, you know. Well, it's not just your perspective, of, but it's also from a variety of couples over the last three years. And, and it is, but I'm saying that's these three are not the only because they're yeah. they're interchangeable. You know, I'm a honestly though, I'm a key communication up there. That's key. That's 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 very key, I believe. So I know that when it came to my last week, the one Actually, that was very close, a fourth one or a bonus would have been vulnerability. Hmm. Very, because they tie into. Yeah, they do. You know, they yeah. they really tie in. Especially we're talking about communication. You have to be vulnerable. If you're gonna have good communication, honest, open, transparent, some of that hot communication, you have to be vulnerable. And right? at the same time, you have to have be allowed a space to exercise that vulnerability. You know, talking about creating a safe space where I can mm -hmm. feel like I can communicate. So this was good. I appreciate it. So. I'm taking notes uh, because let's You're be honest. Nothing now. I'm just playing. The three things I talked about last week, what Snooks is talking about this week, it's not just about being a better husband or a better wife. It's about being a better partner. Amen. Being a better partner so you can be a better couple. 
And that's what it comes down to. When people are celebrating Valentine's Day, you know, every February, it's it's supposed to be love 365. Not just one day. Well, why do you say it like that every February? Well, because everybody knows how I feel that it's, mm-hmm. it shouldn't just be one day. I, I And I agree with you on that. But for those people who don't get it, they only get one day. Hey, man, hey get your day. Get your day. Get your day. That's like, that's like another language. Get your day. <laughs> I'm like, what's your name? Get your day. I'm, I'm get your day, Kaysen. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm going to get my day. That's what it means. <laughs> get your day, Casey. Get your day, Casey. <laughs> get your day. So, look. Hey, sorry, we're getting a little squirrely right now. Like, I hope you all had, um, you got some value out of this particular podcast. Um, we're looking forward to There's still a little bit of a snag. We had some interviews lined up, um, but we're hitting some delays because, hey, guess what? They're human. And they're getting their day. Uh, and they're getting their day. And their day will come. <laughs> No, but there's there's things that change and we have to reschedule all of that. So you might get a heavier dose of us as opposed to these other individuals that we had lined up, um, but you will get them eventually. So it's a matter of making sure we do some rescheduling for some of these couples. Yep. Um, so make sure, tell a friend, have them leave a review. We want you to leave a review. We want you to actually leave a comment um, as well as a rating as well. So you don't get out of that. Um, that's it. That's all. That, that's, you know, that's all clocks. That I, there's a saying that Rochelle used to always say, um, there were some other people too. I was like, tick tock. That's all. Tick. I don't even know how it goes. Anyway, I'm just rambling at this point. I have no idea. Look, until the next time. Be blessed. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye.